Hey, hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another exciting episode in the Kotlin Messenger series. Really hope you guys are doing okay today, and I hope you're ready to move on to a more interesting topic for today's lesson. And basically, in today's video, we are going to be drawing out the chat log activity screen for our application. So let me show you exactly what that looks like inside of the finished version of our application right over here. So basically, every time I click on a new message and click on Arya Stark, right, we are presented with a screen over here that is a very, very long vertical list. And we are going to learn how to exactly render out this list, which might be a little bit tricky. And uh, the reason for that is because this list is actually showing us two different types of rows. Uh, the first row is on the right side with Jon Snow's icon and a message on the left of that icon. And then the second row is over here with Arya Stark starting all the way on the left edge. And we have her message right on the right side of her icon. So the thing that is going to help us a lot in today's video is the actual third party dependency we included in the very last lesson, which is called Groupy. So Groupy is going to allow us to include different rows very, very easily inside of our Recycler View adapter. All right, so once we figure out how to do that, I'm also going to show you how we can actually transfer a user between two different screens or two different activities, right? And so that's the second topic over here. And so let me show you what I mean by that. And basically when we are clicking on here, and let's say I click on Tyrion Lannister, right? Well, we actually have to send Tyrion Lannister all the way into this chat log activity somehow. And the way we are going to do that is to use an Android extension and we're going to turn our user class into a parcel so that we can send it all the way over here. All right, so that might be a little bit confusing, but I'll show you exactly how to do that step by step. And then finally, if we have time, we might be able to get to the keyboard management feature, but no promises there. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get started by going back into Android Studio and then pick up where we left off in the last lesson right now. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Android Studio yet again. Hope you guys are doing well today. And I hope you're ready to start coding right off the bat here. Why don't I remind you where we left off in the last video, right? Uh, so basically, we are now able to click on new message in the top corner right over there. And we're presented with this screen that allows us to select a user for our new message. And so this screen is basically new message activity. And in the last video, we left off on this fetch users function. And so the idea here is that every time we are firing off on data change, we loop through all of the children of our data snapshot, and then we transform all of our data into users, and then we put it inside of our adapter for our recycler view. Okay, so that's where we left off. And one thing I went ahead and did is to kind of reorganize the files inside of my project. And so basically I have new packages called messages, model, and register login. Uh, the way I'm doing this is I'm right clicking here and I'm creating a new package right over there. So that's kind of how my files are structured right now. And what I would like to do at the very start here is to allow the user to click on one of these guys inside of this list and we want to take the user into a brand new chat log activity screen, right? So very similar to what's happening over here, click on that. We want to click on uh, one of the users and bring us into that screen. So how exactly do we do that? Well, the screen that shows us all of these users over here, it's actually a recycler view using an adapter, which is this guy or this guy rather. And what we can do is we can say adapter and set on item click listener. And we'll use this one over here. So this comes with an item and also a view. And so this item refers to the actual row that it's rendering. So let me show you how to actually bring up a new activity every time we click on an item. So it's very similar to what we've been doing this whole time. We're just going to start an activity. And so the intent that we need to start is going to be a brand new intent object. And this guy, we actually need to use the context of this and we need to pull in a brand new activity. So I'll create that right over here inside of messages and let's create an empty activity. So there we go, that's the menu item. This guy, I will just call it chat log activity. Hit the finish down there and you should now end up with a brand new activity for you. 
And let's see, we also have a res file, the layout, and activity chat log is that over here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, the first thing I would like to do inside of here is to, let's say we can maybe change the support action bar title and change this to, you know, chat log or whatever you want. We're just going to use that as some dummy text for now. And so for this guy, we need to import that. And let's see, how can I fix this problem a lot easier? I noticed that sometimes when you create a new activity, it's very difficult to import this R object. So to fix that, you want to go inside of here and take the import line, which is this guy. So just copy that and go back into your new activity and just put that up there. That'll fix that R message. And you should be okay. If you run your app, everything is going to be just like what it was before. Uh, hopefully it will compile and install inside of the simulator. And I am having an error, so let's see what this error is right over here. And let's see. We have this problem right here where we, we are trying to start this intent with this activity. So why don't we go ahead and fix this with chat log activity class Java, and we'll start this guy off just like that. All right, so the problem with this line of code right now is that this object, the this right here, isn't really referring to the context of new message activity. So the way to get the context is to use this view on the right side, say view and get context like that. And there you go. Now your code is fixed and you can finally run the application inside of the emulator yet again. And uh, we'll see what that does by clicking on new message up here, clicking on a new user, let's say Jamie Lannister, and we get this inside of our screen. So pretty awesome. Uh, what we would like to do is to see what happens when we go back to the previous screen using this back button. And you'll see that we actually get back to this screen, which isn't exactly perfect. We would ideally want the user to be brought back to the main page over here. So that's just a small detail. And if you actually finished off the activity, I'll show you what that does and what that does to the back stack of your app. So let's click on the new message, click on any user, let's say Arya Stark. And if you go back now, it'll bring you back into this activity because we finished off the new message activity over here. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. And one thing I really don't like about this right now is that we're missing the back button up there. And so make sure to fix that by going into your manifest. We have chat log activity. We just want to specify a parent for it. So let's just copy that and paste that in there. The parent will be the latest message activity, which is this screen, so that looks pretty good. We will run our code again, and hopefully we'll see what that does. So clicking on new message, clicking on a user here, and now we get the back button to show up on the top left. Okay, so that's great, and everything's looking quite nice so far. Let me go back to the finished version of our app, and let's start trying to render out this screen with the recycler view up here and also this chat area at the very bottom. And I believe this is a edit text and a button on the right side. So let's edit the activity chat log. And what can I do inside of this screen? Well, we can start adding the widgets that we need. So container, I will drag in a container somewhere in here, but why don't I go into the text first? And so I'm going to drag this guy. This will be my enter message text. So I'll get rid of that. Uh, for the hint, we will say enter message. That looks pretty good. So we'll drag this guy all the way down to the bottom somewhere, or we'll just leave it up there and then we'll drag this dot instead. So that'll anchor it to the bottom right there and anchor that to the left as well. And so the next thing we need is that send button on the right side. So why don't we drag this sucker in here, uh, pin that down to the bottom as well. Pin that to the right, and then that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to give it maybe some height, so I'm going to say 50 dp. And okay, that looks pretty nice. And now I can drag this guy all the way to the right, and that'll allow me to change this to match constraint, and that'll expand that to the left and right edges like that. And so that's pretty good. And so far, I think I like my design. Uh, I might want to change this to send instead, so just type in send, and that'll get our button to show up nicely like so. All right, so that's pretty good. The last component we need is the recycler view right above it. 
So if you drag that inside of here, it'll kind of automatically adjust itself. So I actually want to pin that right there. Uh, left edge, right edge, and maybe pin this to the top of the edit text. Okay, so that's pretty good. I might want to bring the bottom up to 16 to be a little bit higher. And I think that's working out nicely. So let me bring this to zero for the top right and left. And there we go, zero, 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 and 16 on the bottom. Uh, change this to match constraint and this as well so that it can reach all the way to the bottom edge there. Okay, so that's looking quite nice. I might as well start giving these guys IDs because I want to work with them a little bit later. So this guy will be the recycler view for the chat log. Uh, this guy, why don't we call it edit text. Let's see, edit text, I like it in lowercase. And this guy will be chat log, like so. And this is the actual send button. So send button and chat log. All right, so that's great. I like taking care of the IDs as soon as I can. And now let's go to the text area. And so one thing I would like to change is I want to change this to the rounded circular button. So that's this over here. And because we already have a resource for the rounded button, so rounded button, you can just click on that and it'll change it like so. Uh, if you want the text color to be white, you can say Android and white, and that'll get the color to be white. Uh, one thing that you might want to change as well is the text style. So get it to bold, make the font a little bit thicker. I think that looks somewhat nicer. And so that's pretty good. Uh, if you want to change this as well, so maybe you don't want to see that bottom horizontal line, I believe if you change the background to white, it'll get rid of that line over there. And you might want to change this to wrap content and change that to 50 dp like so and that'll get the edges to match somewhat more evenly like that. All right, so that is the change that we want to make to our UI. Uh, let's try to run the app right now and make sure that it looks somewhat decent. And we are going to launch a new message, click on Ingrid, and there we go. We have our chat UI down at the bottom. So that's looking great. And what I might also want to do is Let's say I want to change the entire background to white because I'm seeing some differences between here and maybe on the left of the button, which isn't all that great. So let's say background Android and white, so that'll change it to white. Uh, I'm going to modify the background color of the recycler view to be this light green color. So Android green and light green, and that's what I get with our UI. So let's instantly run this inside of our app and maybe we'll see it. And there we go. Uh, you can bring the bottom edge as close as you want inside of the design. So let's change this guy and maybe change this to eight. And let's see how that looks like. So clicking on that, we now have our eight over there. So that looks nicer. The padding is a little bit more consistent. And what we can do now is we'll move back to the new message activity or maybe the chat log activity. And let's see, how can we start rendering out some rows inside of this screen, right? Well, we need to set the recycler view of our chat log and you know, we have to set the adapter to something. So again, the adapter we construct it using the group adapter like so. We want to make sure we have the view holder as our generic object and construct that. And we need to say adapter over here. And let's see, what else are we missing? Well, we can actually add some items to our adapter. And the question is, what are these items here? Well, for the chat over here, I actually want to include a chat item. So very similar to our new message activity over here. These objects I'm actually going to use as the items inside of my recycler view adapter. So I'm going to go back over here and I'll type this out rather quickly. So chat item, this is going to render or subclass the item from the groupy dependency. And I'll just create it very quickly. I know the two methods that I need is git layout and also bind. So I'll just type it out and I'll remove that. And so the question is, what exactly is this layout? Well, it's going to be the row that renders out my chat messages inside of here. So one of these rows, I will create this left one first. 
So let me create it over here. So chat message or let's say layout resource and I will call it chat, let's see, from uh, row right here. So this is the from person or the to person, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter so much. And now I have the chat from row. So what does this row look like? Well, I just want to drag in a text in here for now and maybe even a button as well. So that looks okay. I just want to make sure I see it in my chat log activity uh, when I render out this screen. So for the layout, I'm going to return that row. So return r.layout.c chat from row. And then that looks pretty good. Uh, all I need to do now is I want to add these chat item objects into my adapter. So let's copy this a couple of more times and I'll run my application again. And you'll see a couple of items in my list, hopefully, but I think I'm missing one more a little bit of item inside of my recycler view. All right, so we're not seeing these items inside of the list. Uh, the last thing we need to do is we want to go back to the chat log design text. And for the recycler view, uh, this is something I, I always forget, but you need to set the layout manager to be a linear layout manager. And once you have that, you should start seeing some items inside of your chat log screen. So uh, if you scroll all the way up and down, you'll see the couple of items that you have added to your adapter via the chat log activity over here. Okay, so that's looking pretty great. Uh, I'm going to go back to the chat from row and let's see the text over here. I might want to say wrap content and that'll make our rows a lot shorter. So hitting the instant run, we'll see exactly what that'll do. And so that makes our rows a lot shorter. And so what I want to actually change with our rows right now is I want to include some kind of image on the left side and then the text view on the right, okay? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go over here in the design mode. Let's get rid of the button. And I want to drag in an image view, which is going to be on the left side. And let's see, let's pick an interesting image. So the button star in the orange is what I'll use. Uh, for the width and the height, let's use something like 50 or 50 dp, 50 dp. Uh, that looks good. I will pin this to the top over here. And then I'll pin this to the left as well. And for this guy, I want to pin this to the right of the star over there. All right, so that looks great. Uh, might as well pin this to the top over there. And then what I will do is just leave that over there. And so this is my message. So this is my message and just hit enter. And that'll look a little bit different. Maybe I'll zoom in to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. And so that's what I have so far. Uh, what I can do now is I can make it look something like this a lot easier by going into the text. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the text view and I will make the background, so background, I will make it Android white like so. And then I will also include some padding for it. So padding, we'll say 16 dp. And that's what we have. So you can kind of see that you have a white background to the edges of this text view over there, right? So. Uh, the last thing you want to do is to provide your rounded corners for this text view. And the easiest way of doing this is to use a drawable, so drawable. And I'm going to use the one we use for the register screen, so the edit text over here. And that's going to make it rounded off, kind of like what you're seeing over here. So it's slightly rounded off. You can't really see it, but it is definitely there. So if I run the application again with these UI changes, you'll start seeing what the message rows will look like inside of our app. And let's see, Arya Stark. And now that is what we get. So that looks pretty good to me. If you change this message to, let's say that will wrap into multiple lines and keep on going. So you can kind of see it extends all the way off to the edges over there, right? And if you run again, you'll get a better picture as to what that looks like. So that's pretty good. And uh, obviously we don't really want it to extend that far. Uh, the trick here is to provide a max width property. So 240 DP, we'll get it to be roughly that size. 
And so if you run it again, you'll see what that will render for us inside of our application. All right, so now that we're rendering out the from row inside of our chat log, let's work on the other chat row, which is going to start on the right edge over here. And so that kind of looks like this. So it starts on the right side. And the way I am going to quickly do this is to copy this file. So Command C and paste that inside of the layout. And I'm just going to modify this to the chat two row. Hit the enter and the chat two row looks exactly like the chat from row right now. And I'm going to go into the design. I'm going to drag this guy to the right side. But first, let me click on that to remove the left constraint. And I'll drag that over here. Let me actually do this for a quick second. I'm going to move this to the right a little bit. And I'm going to move the text view to the right of that. And now what I can do is I can actually move this. Well, I can remove that first. And then I'll click on this, move that to the right over here. And for this guy, I might want to provide it a right of either 8 or 16. Whatever you want, I think that's pretty good. And so here is now my chat two row, which looks very, very similar, right? All we're doing is we're changing the orientation from the left side all the way to the right. And so now what I can do is inside of my chat log activity, I can actually create another chat item for my adapter. So I'm going to copy and paste this in here. This top one will be the from, and then the bottom one will be the to like so. And then this guy down here will be the chat two row like that. And now what I can do is I can kind of alternate these guys So put that there. And then I will say chat two item here and also over there. And so you can run your code now and you'll see an alternating left and right chat message inside of the chat log. So click on the new message and click on one of these users. And you can see that these messages are now alternating, right? Okay, so pretty good. And let's see, what else can we do to fix this problem over here? You kind of see these edges are really, really thin right here, right? Uh, I'll leave that for you to fix. And what I would like to move on to now is maybe something else. So let me paste that in a couple of more times. I want to see this when the list is actually very tall. And so that looks pretty good. Uh, one thing that you might want to do is whenever this is reached all the way to the bottom area for the messaging, you can actually include some margins on the bottom of these rows. So let me see if I can do that really quickly over here. So this is the chat two row. We can actually provide a margin bottom, so margin bottom. And uh, let's change this to 8 dp or 16 dp, maybe 12. That sounds like a good number. Uh, the chat from row, we will do the same thing. Uh, we'll say margin bottom, and then we'll provide this with 12 dp as well. Click on the red again, and hopefully we can see this inside of the chat log. And so if you drag your screen up, it'll be really, really uh, nicely separated away from the bottom chat input area. I uh, don't know exactly what the problem is over here, but yeah, definitely fix that when you get the time to do it. All right, so now that we have our chat log nicely rendered out inside of this list over here, Let's move on to the next task, and I want to show you what I want to do by going back into the finished application. And let's say I click on the compose new message, and I click on this user over here, right? I'm actually sending this user all the way into the chat log, and that's how we're seeing the name of that user all the way in the top nav bar. So let me show you how to do that by going back into our application over here. And so the way to do it is to actually go back into the new message activity, which is this screen. So new message activity. And instead of fetch users, we are setting the on item click listener. And what we can do for the intent right here for the chat log activity is we can actually put something called an extra in here so that we can retrieve it later on inside of the chat log over here. So. The way to do this is let's say we actually want to get the item or get the user outside of the item over here, right? So whenever we are clicking on here, we have access to the item and this item has an actual object on it, but we can't really get access to it just yet. So this is the actual item. And the problem right now is this item right here isn't casted into the correct object. 
So I'll say user item equals item like that, and I will cast it into a user item like so. And this way I can actually access the user object like that. So you can see user is inside of the autocomplete, and you can say user name as well. All right, so this is actually the value that we want to pass. And then the first parameter is actually something called a key. So this is the key over here. And I'll create this key at the very top, and I'll call it user key instead. This is actually a little bit easier. So for this guy, you can create a companion object, and you'll say val user key equals some kind of string, so user key like that. And this allows us to send our username to the next activity, which is the chat log activity. All right, so the way you actually get this object out inside of the chat log activity is somewhere up here, you can just simply say intent, and you can get the extras out of it. So you can get the string extra, so get string extra, like this over here. And you actually have to provide it with that key. So you can say new message activity, and the user key is now a static constant on that class. And so what I can do now is I can actually set this to a username variable right over here. And I can finally change the support action bar title to be this username. And I'll remove that for now. And let's run this code and you'll see what's going to happen every time I tap on a new user. So new message and then a user, let's say Jamie Lannister, that will get passed into the action bar through these two lines of code over there. All right, so this is a pretty common pattern that allows you to pass objects from two different activities. And what I wanna do now is to show you how to pass an entire user object instead of just a very simple string, okay? So inside of the new message activity for the intent put extra, I actually want to say something like intent put extra. We'll use the user key again. And I want to pass the user item dot user instead of just the user name, okay? And the reason I want to do that is because for the chat log activity, it's actually very useful to get more information regarding the user. So what I'll have access to is the UID and also the profile image URL in addition to just the username. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm doing this. And let's see, the problem with this is that we can't exactly put a user object inside of this method call. And we actually need to do something, for example, like put a string and parcelable instead of just this user guy. And so the problem is that this user is not a parcel object. And so let me show you what the user is inside of the models package. And so this guy is just a plain old object. You can actually subclass the parcelable like this over here. And this actually fixes the problem inside of this screen. So this is the new message activity. This problem goes away, but for this user over here, we don't have this function called write to parcel implemented. So write to parcel is over there. And it's actually very, very tedious to implement that method. You have to convert all of these properties over here into a parcel object. And so the easiest way to accomplish this feature of turning this user into a parcelable is to use something called an Android extension. And so let me show you how that works by going over into the build Gradle file. And somewhere up at the top there, you can use Android extensions and experimental equals to true. Uh, sync that, and then you'll get this inside of your project. Uh, what you can do now is you can go to your user and you can declare an annotation right here, and you can parcelize your user object like so, and that'll help you implement that missing method of writing this object to a parcel. All right, so that's just a very quick shortcut to make things work a lot faster. Uh, I do recommend that you take advantage of these libraries when possible. And so now what we can do is whenever we are inside of the new message activity, we're, we are able to pass in this user object entirely into the intent for our chat log activity. So chat log is over here. And so for this guy, we are no longer going to get the user name, but instead we can get the entire user. So intent, so intent. And this guy, we can say get a parcelable extra like so. And this guy, we will have to declare the user as the generic. And inside of here, we call the new message and user key, just like what we did up here. 
All right, so the user is up here. You can say user dot whatever you want now. So UID, we'll use this instead for now. And we can run the code again. And instead of seeing just the name, we can see the UID. So we will click on new message over here. You can click on anybody you want, so Arya Stark. And the UID is actually that. And that's what you'll find in the Firebase database area. And obviously we want the username, so we'll change that back. Hit the instant run and you'll see Arya Stark right over there. So pretty awesome stuff. Alrighty guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's lesson. In the very next episode, we're gonna start sending messages to and from the users inside of our Firebase database. So hopefully you're excited for that lesson. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down below. The source code for everything that you saw in today's video is going to be available using a link in the description below. Hopefully you enjoyed today's lesson and hopefully you learned something new. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye bye guys.